what's up guys? It's John Dillahay here from 2SM Performance and I'm back for my sixth episode of the CAM Files with Practical Machinist and today I have another special episode for you guys. Today we're going to learn how to take any photograph or company logo and convert it to G-code using photo editing software and a CAM system. So I always wondered how to do this when I first started programming. I couldn't figure out how to do it. I had to do a lot of researching and digging to figure out how to do it. And my goal today for this video is to show how easy it really is so you guys can get to it and do it. So let's do this. So you've decided that you want to engrave your logo or your customer's company logo or any kind of photo on a custom part of yours or a product line or whatever. And your artwork for your logo is not just a font. It's some kind of custom graphic that you had an artist make for you or AI generate for you. And you cannot just type it into your cam system or CAD system and plug in the font and do it that way. The way I get artwork into the cam system is first by converting it to a vector image. And then when we take our vector image and we export that as a DXF file. So when you originally get your artwork, you're going to get a, a JPEG or a PNG file, something like that. Any legitimate photo editing software will be able to help you convert this to a vector image. The original image is a raster image. So you want to convert the raster into a vector image. And the way we do this is by using a feature called image trace. Now the photo software that I use is Adobe Illustrator, but I'm sure there are many other softwares out there where you can do the same thing. The thing I like about Illustrator is that I can also export that vector image as a DXF so I can open it in my CAD system. Once we get our logo's geometry imported into CAD as a DXF, we're then able to scale it to the size that we want for our part and then move that into CAM and then program that geometry. From there, we can decide how deep we want the engraving to go and other things that are different variables. So to summarize, that is basically the gist of it and how it works. So now I'm gonna show you how I do it on my computer and you can follow along step by step to learn how to do it yourself. So here I am opening Adobe Illustrator and then opening my photo of my logo that I had made already. It's a PNG file, it's rasterized. Here there are the different tools you can select. The top arrow is the selection tool. All you have to do is click on the image of the logo and see the box highlight it. Then I go down to the window menu and I click on image trace. Now when you click on image trace, you can preview it. There's a slide bar where you can adjust your threshold. Um, I use this to slide it back and forth and see how thick or thin I want my lines for my, rest, my uh, vector image, I usually stay around the middle at 100. That's where I like to set it. Once I'm happy with where it's at, then I go and export it as a DXF. I do that by going up to the file menu. And I go to export and export as. Now from the drop down menu, I chose the save as type, I uh, save it as .dxf so I can open it in CAD. So once I select where I want my exported DXF file to go, I get this menu right here where I have some options and then I hit OK. And then it's time to go to my CAD CAM system and open the file. Now you'll see where I go to open it for my computer and it will come into the CAD as real lines of geometry. Just like that. And now we can chain off of that and create toolpaths for engraving or pocketing or whatever we want to do. So I'm, I'm going to use this for a nameplate for the wall in my office. 
So I'll show you how I do that. So when you bring your geometry for your logo into CAD, just be aware that there's gonna be some extra lines around the border of your logo or design. So you're gonna to have to delete those. But then I copy my geometry and I create a new sketch on top of my part or my stock. And this is where I'm gonna copy and paste my new line geometry for my logo. You can see down in the bottom right corner that it's bringing in all those lines that we're pasting over. Usually when I bring in uh, an exported DXF, uh, it's gonna be way off of scale. So I zoom out and it's usually oriented incorrectly. So in this case, I'm gonna flip the logo around 180 degrees to have it facing the correct way that I want it. And then we're gonna to have to scale the line geometry down. Right now it's, it comes in way, way, way too big. So how I'm gonna negate this is select all my line geometry and then I'm gonna to go to modify and then scale. Now it's gonna ask me for a point where to scale from and I usually just choose somewhere in the middle of the logo for starters and then I'm gonna scale this down to uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.03 of what it was before because I'm comparing it to my part in the upper corner. So once we get it down to a smaller size, I'm gonna drag it over to where I want it on my part. I'm gonna zoom out, grab it, and drag it. Now it may need to be scaled down one more time for it to fit properly. Uh, I'm pretty close here, I think, but I think I'm gonna want it a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna center it on my part. So notice here that I'm actually scaling the geometry of my logo on the plate one more time to fill it out better and then I'm using my point as the center datum of the drawing since I already have my logo centered on the plate where I want it. So this seems like it's going to be a good size right here and when we machine this and engrave it I think it's going to look really cool for my wall in my office or my shop. So fast forward here, I created some line geometry to make the logo pop up off the plate and I also added a chamfer to the edge, not to mention four 3 16th holes in the corners to mount it to the wall. Also one thing I really need to note here is once you have everything where you want it, you need to double check your line geometry and make sure you have closed chains and everything is where you need it. If anything looks out of place or funky, it's probably because you had your threshold adjusted wrong in your photo editing software when you created the vector image. So maybe you need to adjust that a little bit more, a little bit less, and then re-export it as a DXF and check one more time. I found that this works pretty good. So this is my setup for machining. As you can see, I got my stock mode to set to relative size box. So I can add 10 thousandths of stock material on top of the model for facing purposes. And I also have my work coordinate system set in the center. So this is my adaptive roughing cycle. And then next is my finishing cycle with the quarter inch to make all the inside corners. There's my facing operation. And then right here is my chamfer with my chamfer offset set to 65 thousandths. So we get good clearance. And then my spot mill goes down far enough to create the chamfer for the holes. And then we drill the holes. So to go over what we've been able to get done so far is we took a rasterized normal PNG or JPEG image and we have converted it into a vector image using the image trace feature. Once we did that, we were able to export that vector image as a DXF file. A DXF file is a file that we can open in CAD. So once we got that open in CAD, we were able to utilize that geometry and put it into our model for our program.
So now that we have our solid model finished and programmed, I figured I'd set up the machine, set my work coordinate system, and uh, touch off my tools and make sure I have everything ready so I can rough everything out. And then once I get that done, we'll go to the engraving and go from there. So now that we have our outline finished and machined, the only thing left to do is engrave the nameplate. So as you can see here, I have a 1 32nd ball in mill selected as my engraving tool. I'm running it at max RPM for my machine, which is 10,000 RPM. And as you can see here, I have lots of geometry chains that I selected. As far as the heights go, I always set my top height for engraving as the top of the model and my bottom height to whatever depth total that I want to get to. So I want to go 5,000 steep on this one for the first try. And since our diameter of the ball end mill is so small, it's 32 and a half thousandths of an inch, we're going to step down 1,000th at a time per pass so not, that we're not digging too deep at that amount of feed and breaking our little ball end mill. I probably should have gone with a 1 16th inch ball end mill for engraving, but I'm so used to using the 1 32nd because it can get in all the tight little corners and you can get a lot of definition with it when engraving. With the thicker ball end mill, I probably could have gone a little faster and a little deeper, reducing time. So for the overall depth of the, the engraving, I actually dropped my height offset for the engraving end mill of five more thousandths so we're at a total depth of ten thousandths here and I think it actually looks really good. So I'm actually really super hyped with how this nameplate came out. I couldn't have asked for a better result. I hope you guys learned something in this episode. I, this is the way that I have learned how to do it on my own. There might be easier ways, there might be better ways, but this is the way that I know how to do it. So basically taking a regular image, converting it to a vector image, and then you're exporting it as a DXF. And you can use this same process for a lot of other different things like reverse engineering. So to wrap things up, I wanted to give a special shout out to my fellow contributors at Practical Machinist. Everyone there is awesome, especially Curtis at Millspec Manufacturing. He is the one that gave me the idea to make this episode. He was curious how it was done. So thank you, Curtis. You're the man. I appreciate the inspiration. So until next time, I'm John Dillahay with 2S and Performance, and stay tuned for another episode of The Cam Files with Practical Machinists. See you then. Peace.